Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. It is the Hanwe Oda Nobunaga Katana. And before I get into the review, before I tell you any more about it, a couple quick caveats you should know. One, this sword was purchased secondhand, and that means that uh, it may not be representative of what you'd expect to get were you to buy one new from Cult of Athena or Hanwe or some other authorized distributor, whoever you happen to like to buy swords from. Uh, also, I believe the previous owner noted that this one was a Cult of Athena scratch and dent sale. The sword did not appear to be in any kind of diminished condition when the previous owner got it, so I think it's pretty representative, or at least will give you some idea of what to expect where you to buy a sword like this, but hopefully yours is nicer is the main point. The other thing I should note is that I, while I do study Japanese swordsmanship and I do collect swords, I am a novice in this grand realm of things, so take what I say with that context in mind. Uh, the other thing you should keep in mind is that in the grand scale of katanas, I am a novice and this review is just my thoughts and opinions, the musings of a person who likes sharp shiny things. I do study Japanese swordsmanship, I've been doing it a long time, but I'm not particularly good at it, and those are things you should kind of keep in mind as you hear my musings on these particular types of swords. Uh, hopefully, you can actually mute the video and not listen to me talk and the photos give you some idea if this is worth your money or not. Speaking of money, this is 950-ish dollars on the CS Iberia website. It's probably an order of magnitude less on Cult of Athena. They usually have like a 30% markup or something like that. So I will share the link in the description down below where you can buy it and what the price is, but this in effect is not an inexpensive sword. Also, it's a light, lively sword, and that's one thing that it's it's showing on the website is that it says it's two pounds, six ounces, it's actually two pounds, five ounces. So it's a light, lively little blade, and it's supposed to be done in the in kind of the theme of Odu Nobunaga, a famous Japanese general. I'll let you know, historically speaking, I suck at that kind of stuff. I don't know at all if these fittings represent Odo Nobunaga or tell an interesting story about his life, but if you happen to know more about that history, throw it in the comments down below. You can educate me and the rest of us along the way. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the review, the fit and finish, and all that kind of stuff like I normally do, and then and then, well, that's really about it. That's what I'm going to do. All right, the first fitting that I'm going to show you is the Kasha. And in a nutshell, this is a kind of symptomatic of Hanwe. I think they really do a great job in terms of their overall casting. And by that, I mean this fitting, I think, is supposed to look similar to Goto fittings. Goto is like a gold and copper alloy mixture, which darkens and gives a kind of a deep black patina on it. And then they're often, uh, not engraved, but gold is is kind of bedazzling them as well, and they're very flashy fittings. Very often though, when I see companies try to use cast fittings to emulate them, the gold leaf or the gold plating or however they put the gold color on there, looks like it's finger painted on and it's very easy to look muddy and yucky. This doesn't, it's obviously kind of a moon cast shadow of what it's emulating, uh, just about anything would be if it's not kind of kind of actual genuine genuine stuff, but um, this is not as haphazardly applied as, as many companies out there, and I think overall it, it's at least handsome looking. You can make out a lot of details in the in kind of the fit and finish on here. There's, there's quite a bit to see, quite a bit of detail in the casting, which often gets muddied over time and just doesn't look as good as, as Hanoi is able to produce. Uh, a couple other general notes about the the Kashra here. Uh, the transitions are not not bad. It's tight. It hasn't loosened up. The knots don't move around at all, and it's it's one of the tighter fittings. Uh, this little Shitadome piece over here, as I've been practicing with this sort of little, has a slight ledge to it, as they often do, but it hasn't bit my hand or, or been uncomfortable to use. Moving on to the Ito, it's a green silk. It almost has kind of a green cotton look. This one obviously shows some signs of use and wear and age. Um, I find that not necessarily to be a bad thing, it's endearing. The diamonds on this are actually better shaped than I often see on Hanway, but they're still a little a little haphazard, not, not exactly consistent. There's a big one here and a little one here, uh, but the Ito is reasonably tight, actually. And very often on Hanway swords, I have a number of them over here, um, just a little bit of pressure will move these kind of twists or knots around. And here, this actually feels quite tight, and I don't know if it has to do with the weather. Uh, it's very humid and somewhat cool in Minnesota right now, and, uh, and sometimes that can affect how tight these things feel. It swells the wood up, and anyway. Long and the short of it, though, is at the moment it feels tight, and while I've been practicing with it, it's felt tight. Underneath here, there is a black uh, Samegawa ray skin, and it appears to be reasonably large nodules. One side is relatively light, and this is the side that would go towards you. So as I have the sword in my belt, uh, the, the teeny ray skin side is pointed to the, <laughs> the part where people don't see, and the one with the larger ray skin nodules is uh, pointed outward. And there are some pretty meaty sized ray skin nodules here. This one has had the lacquer kind of chip off, uh, but it's, it's of a reasonable size. And that's not something you usually see in, in black Samegawa. It's very easy to not see the size of the ray skin without really looking close to it. So honestly, when I do custom projects, I usually use a kind of 
lesser grade ray skin because it, it's not something people can really see. If you're not doing white or accentuating them in some way, it, uh, it's nice that they're, they're of a good quality, but at the same time, it's, it's a little bit of a waste since you can't really appreciate it. Uh, there are Moan symbols on the Manuki. The Manuki are kind of the lesser quality cast, which is something I find a little bit surprising. Hanoi is usually a little better about this than, than not. Their casting quality is quite good, but I find these to be a little less detailed than the rest of the fittings. The shape of the handle is where I also take a little bit of issue. It is a big, giant Hanwei axe handle. And while this blade really feels very similar, dynamically speaking, to a Hanwei Shinto, uh, which I'll, I'll give weapon dynamics and, and talk about the dynamics later in the, in the review, it's a light, lively blade. This handle does not feel particularly good to me. It's a large, axe handly type Hanwei ska, and it's, it's similar to other Hanwei products. The Ito being tight, that, that much is nice, but I don't really particularly like the feel of, of this. Despite the, the, the Ito being tight and functionally this being a very sound handle, uh, I just don't like the way it feels in my hand. It's it's not hard to index. There's no simple thing that I can say other than I just don't particularly like the feel of it and it doesn't really help me in, in studying. I prefer the feeling of a Hanwei Shinto, which is a little slimmer, a little uh, a little more refined feeling blade, but at the set or a little more refined feeling handle to, to my hands, to my liking. But some people like this very large handle. I have kind of meaty sausage fingers and it's it feels okay in the hand, but at the same time I I can't say that I'm a big fan of this particular handle. It's also just generally big. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Fuchi now. And on the Fuchi, so one side has nothing on it. It's black, and that's just the side that would, would point towards you that people wouldn't necessarily see, which is common enough in, in Japanese sword furniture. Uh, the side that people don't see often isn't, isn't as embellished or has nothing on it. On this side, though, we have a flintlock musket and, and a powder keg or presumably the thing that holds the powder, and I, I guess I don't know anything about Oda Nobunaga, so I don't know about his use of firearms or how symptomatic that is. What I will say is the casting quality, just like the Fuji, seems to be uh, really quite good. You can make out quite a bit of detail on here that, uh, that would easily be muddied or ugly were these made by perhaps somebody less skilled at casting. Transitions as well also are, are nice. There's not like a ledge or anything that bites my fingers. Uh, these are detailed and raised up. It's not just kind of pictured on here. There's there's some texture to it. They're cast in there. Um, but they don't bite my hands. It's a comfortable sword to use from a user perspective, aside from the fact that I don't particularly like the, the way the handle feels. Here is the Suba. We got Samurai holding the sword over his shoulder. Uh, the Oda Nobunaga Moan is holding the what looks like, I don't know if that's supposed to be wine or the powder keg. Um, anyway, just a lot of detail here. So I like that Hanwei did this raised rim. Uh, when you do this raised rim on, on a historic piece, um, it makes me not expect these kind of details, like the, the handle to kind of wrap around the edge. I'm not expecting that. And I imagine that's harder to cast if you're doing it kind of three-dimensionally. But this raised rim uh, looks nice. And I, I like the execution. I think these casting quality-wise are are overall quite good. There's quite a bit of detail that you can make out in the face, in the handle, you can kind of make out the Tsukumaki, kind of the, the diamonds that are, are in the Ito on the handle. Overall, the casting quality, again, from Hanwei is really quite good. Kind of on the business end of the Subit, you uh, you see a Yari battle. Again, detailed, but to a lesser extent, and also uh, pretty common, as, as it's supposed to be similar to a historical blade, or at least it's representing a Japanese katana very often if this was sitting in your belt, uh, people would see this side as you face them, so the bedazzled side with gold and all that tends to be the side that faces outward, um, as that's what people see. And while you're holding it, this this side of the suba doesn't, uh, there's an amote and a urine, I can't remember which one's which. Anyway, the side that uh, faces the blade, the business end, often isn't as as bedazzled. Anyway, suffice to say, the overall casting quality, again, is really quite good. Hanwei is very good at that, and I do like that they're, they're making an attempt at, at some story and some artistry. Uh, whether or not I personally like it is subjective, but I will admit that it seems well cast and well done. Now, this one originally came with a Sageo. I don't have that. It didn't come with it for me. This is a, a green lacquered Saya. Hanwei does a good job with the lacquering and painting. Uh, the Saya is, is thick. 
It could be a little thinner, a little bit more refined, but overall it seems well shaped from a transition standpoint. Let me see if I can show this to you. Uh, the Fuchi and the Kweguchi area here, they kind of line up. There's no weird jutting edges or anything like that. It also fits reasonably well, so it doesn't fall out. And the kind of tension on the Habaki area here is, is comfortable, again, from a user perspective. The Saya also doesn't rattle. This is one of the better fit on my Saya that I've, I've actually had. Um, I don't know exactly why that is, but very often they'll rattle or very often this will, will not be tensioned correctly. Um, this is something that you can fix in terms of tension, but the rattling usually isn't something you can fix in a way that's good. You can stuff cotton down there, you can try and do some things, but all of them have uh, kind of some side effects which are less than ideal. So ideally it just doesn't rattle at all. And this one is, is really, really quite well fit. It doesn't, doesn't bounce around at all in there. Well, at the same time, it doesn't, doesn't really bind. It's not quiet, but it's also not binding anywhere. And here it moves around and then tensions properly and holds in. So from a, a, from a user perspective and a sort of this price point, I really kind of like how the, the Saya fits and, and looks. And Hanwei's kind of lacquer is usually a little thicker and a little nicer uh, than, than some of the other inexpensive options. See the Koiguchi area? Pretty common for Hanwei pieces. See, I'm not so great at Noto and I've scratched it up a bit. The Kurigata is a little close for me. Um, I would like it if it were about an inch lower, but this is again a kind of a subjective thing. It's easy to make them too far down and then it's a little weird in your OB, but placement wise, this is not, not bad at all. Anyway, that's enough about the side. Before I move on, the Habaki is a simple brass Habaki, which you've probably seen a few times on many other swords. Very simple Hanwei brass looking habaki. Fits on pretty well, doesn't wiggle. Habaki, habaki. I'm going to talk quickly about the general shape of the blade. It's a relatively small blade. It has a really, and I'll provide dimensions and all that kind of stuff in the description down below. Really similar basically to a Hanwei Shinto. Despite its small size, it doesn't really have any flex. If I apply it here, it's a very rigid blade. It's pretty thick, even though its dimensions are relatively small. It has a significant amount of taper and it lends itself to being uh, pretty lively, which the dimensions and weapon dynamics computer will show. Now I've moved this around in terms of using it uh, for the purposes of Eido, it's comfortable enough. I mean, I would say I don't, again, <laughs> like the handle particularly, but the blade itself is, is comfortable enough to move around. There's no real complaints that I would have other than the, the purely subjective ones. All right, I'm gonna move on to the blade itself. And what you see here, aside from the cutting scratches, is basically kind of a deep uh, etch. The, the white frosty hamon on the Hanwei pieces is not something I'm a super big fan of, mostly because it doesn't allow me to appreciate some of the metallurgical effects that have happened from differential heat treatment. Now, they're under there. I've seen people polish this frosty hamon off, and underneath there's something that is, I find, more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, but there are some endearing facts to this, and factors to this uh, kind of frosty hamon. It's visible in just about any light, and it's pretty durable. You can see some of the cutting scratches here haven't made it go away or anything like that. So there's there's some pleasant parts. It also has, you know, some, some different... Uh, colorations here, the, the bohi area, the fuller area is kind of a mirror polish, and then along the blade, this kind of tapered section is, is a frostier color, and it's nice to have that contrast. All right, just a couple recaps on the user perspective side of things. From a user perspective, purely EI, just kata, just drawing and resheathing. This is a comfortable enough experience if I could get past the fact that I really don't like the handle, and I don't want to understate how much that impacts my uh, general experience with this sword. It made it overall, I would say, mediocre at best. But if I get past the subjective, me not liking the shape of the handle and it uh, causing me to really not have a, a, you know, a great feeling about connectivity to this sword, it's still um, overall a relatively positive experience on all other fronts. It has a nice sound. If I do the, the cut well, uh, it rewards me with the sound, letting me know that I do it well, which can be useful from a, a learning perspective. Uh, the Saya didn't rattle. It draws well. It's a little noisy on the draw and sheath, but overall comfortable. The Ito is tight. Um, so there are certainly redeeming factors around using this sword, and it is a light, lively blade. It's just I don't... I don't particularly like the way it rests in my hand. Anyway, that's a subjective thing. The rest of it, I would say, is quite positive from a user perspective, just doing EI, or general kata. Uh, from a cutting perspective, this sword is not particularly sharp. I mean, it is sharp. It could certainly cut me. I wouldn't want to run my finger uh, too too thoroughly down the, the blade itself here, but uh, it, it didn't really slice through the milk jugs particularly well. It would have chunks resting on the, the blade itself. It was almost tearing at times. And also, when I went to the used Japanese tatami mat, 
there's some good and bad that happen. One, um, this is a relatively small blade and I've grown accustomed to using performance cutters. And perhaps, admittedly, if it's not just my form and my posture and all the other things wrong with how I'm cutting the, the piece, I've, I've grown accustomed to using swords that are just exceedingly good cutters and will do some of the work for me. If I want to get better, it might behoove me to sharpen up a blade like this so it has the desired level of sharpness and use a sword that will not do the work for me where I have to have good form, good posture, good all of the things to, to cut a used Japanese tatami mat successfully. Anyway, this one just isn't sharp enough and it doesn't have a profile that really lends itself to doing that task particularly well. It would it cut into it deep enough to to certainly injure him or kill them if they were a person, but it did not it did not cut through those mats particularly well. Uh, the redeeming thing here is that I was very concerned that I bent it. There were a lot of bad cuts. I knocked it over. I'm, I'm a, not a small man and I put a lot of force into it and the sword uh, took it and is still straight. It's, it's a differentially hardened blade. It didn't bend. There was nothing for me to fix. Uh, I, I might say it needs a, a little keener edge, but overall it's a durable blade. It held up well. And even though it required a lot of oomph to make it through a tatami mat, this sword, um, if you <laughs> like the handle and it doesn't have the same effect on you that it does me is one that I could certainly see uh, being being an agile cutter and getting in and basically being as rewarding or comfortable to use as a Hanwei Shinto. If the Shinto handle is too small for you then this one might be might be the sword for you. It does seem like I would be able to do more harassing cuts and be a little bit more nimble as opposed to cleaving a man in two. Anyway from a user perspective it was okay but I would say it was not overly positive. Uh, obviously, there's some redeeming things. I just don't particularly like the handle, and it didn't cut particularly well. Um, while I could see some value in what it did do, I, I would say the performance doesn't leave me overly enthused. Final thoughts here. Do I personally think the sword is worth the money or not? Honestly, to me, no. The, the bad experiences I had with how the sword feels in my hand are enough. The poor cutting is something I could look past by putting a keener edge on it. I'm not going to do that. I'm probably just going to sell this sword. But uh, yeah, it's not that it's a ripoff or bad. It's just that to me, I don't like the feeling of the handle. And that's really the biggest reason. You might like it. And so maybe that's that's a that's a feature rather than a problem for you. Uh, in terms of edge sharpness, I, I know Hanway can come out of the box sharper than this. So it wouldn't surprise me if the one you get where you buy one would be sharper. But this one certainly it could use a keener edge if, if you're going to do any kind of any any of the cutting that I was doing in this video and want to have better success with it. But it's a durable blade. I don't think it's a bad product. It's just not not the product for me. And more than that, Hanwei makes a product that I really like in this shape and style, and that's the Hanwei Shinto. I prefer personally the the dragons as as kind of cliche as they might be at this point for katana. But I I like the Hanwei Shinto. I like the aesthetics of it better. I like the handle. I like how it sits in my hand. I've been very complimentary of that blade in the past. And if I had to choose between this and that, I would choose that every single time. Anyway, hopefully the video has been interesting. That's all I have for you. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.